what should you side with in this war? We're getting fun strats. Tom laid to weigh in on as this battle cry intensifies battle. on both sides. Wow. <laughs> so uh, you're the general here, Tom. What do we do? Um, well, you know, I prefer not to pick winners and losers when, you know, we're looking at cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. That's I, wimpy. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I think both are, have merits. But, um, but if I was putting new money to work today, so a fresh dollar, I would be a lot more interested in buying a laggard uh, that could attract fee inflows rather than something that's already potentially overbought. Why is Bitcoin cash going up so much more than Bitcoin regular, shall we call it? Why is it the overbought of the two that you were so yes. reluctant to name? Um, well, I think you know, part of the uh, interest recently has been because of this uh, upcoming, upcoming hard fork. Um, Hard and fork, a, that's when there is, when they... Yeah, there's uh, a protocol change taking place. You have to re place. Re increase the amount of computing power that is added to create God, you get hard fork. Right? You got yeah. that? Hard fork. It's, it's okay. not, no, like, it's not sure. knife or spoon or spork. It's a it's hard fork. fork. Hard fork. <laughs> um, a spatula. But, uh, but I also actually think it's in part to, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, you had another guest on here, Brian Kelly, talking about Bitcoin Cash. And is, I, I actually think... His new entry actually had something to do with it, as well, with it as well. Tell me this. Tom McClellan and Jeff Gunlack have both said that they think Bitcoin has acted as uh, a measure of the broader market or a signal of the broader market earlier. So when Bitcoin was going up dramatically, that was a signal that the stock market was going to go up dramatically. And when it started to fall, that the stock market was going to fall. Now, is this, do you believe that at all? Uh, I, I'm not a huge believer in Bitcoin being a sentiment indicator for the stock market. Um, but I can see how it's, they're casually connected because, uh, you know, if you look at like the CTA universe, the commodity trading and trend following uh, money managers, Bitcoin to them is simply another instrument that if it's trending higher, they're going to be adding leverage. And so I think as, if Bitcoin's rallying, it, it is indicative of a risk on rally. Do you see adoption, when we talked about people investing in Bitcoin, do you see, and I like checking in with you on a regular basis because you are right there at the epicenter of this business. Do you see the people that you're talking to on the trading desk, are they figuring out viable ways to invest in Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, alternative currencies? Are they allowed to, and I use that word purposeful, are they allowed to invest now? Do you see that as being a wider berth? Yeah, it's, um, I'm not going to quote Rumsfeld correctly, um, but I think it's a little bit like <laughs> no, how Rumsfeld would say, like, things are happening to make things happen. So I think every week that passes, uh, there's further progress and further clarity. On, so I think more clients are starting to be very serious about um, how they want to have exposure to this asset class. And so we're, we're having more conversations with people you never think would actually have an interest who want to talk about crypto. And is quick, that what, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 go quick ahead. question. Did Goldman Sachs just announce creating a crypto trading desk? Is that, is that a good thing or not necessarily to mean anything? Um, I, I think it's a good thing. I think it, it's, it's a sign that uh, a major investment bank believes that there's enough clarity and custody and money to be made to actually offer that trading service. So I think it, it, it really is a sign that this is becoming mainstream. Um, I mean, if you think about it, like a, a, an exchange like Binance, you know, made almost a billion dollars in, in less than a year of operation. ICE, which is the largest liquid markets exchange, only made a billion six um, last year. So, I mean. Tell us about your Bitcoin misery index. Yes. Yeah, so, the BMI? Yeah, so we have a Bitcoin misery <laughs> index. Um, and it is now. Yeah. <laughs> and you should think of it as like, how does it make you, how does Bitcoin make you feel? So the misery index is a measure of the consistency of Bitcoin. And it was 18 in February, which is misery. Um, and it clawed to 30-ish in March. It's now at 47. Now, 50 is, you know, is like the PMI. It's, it's actually between happy and sad. So it's mm -hmm. inching its way. And, and historically, as the BMI moves up, Bitcoin's I, price usually accelerates. And you calculate this how? So we look at uh, both win ratio, so the, the percentage of days Bitcoin outperforms, and then what we call upside versus downside vol. So how much do you make on the up days versus down days? Uh. You have to keep in mind, Bitcoin makes all of its return in 10 days in any year. So that's why you have to watch the BMI, because it, you don't want to lose your head when it's doing badly. And when you get over 25, you're obese. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> yes. Tom Lee. <laughs> all right. How do you know that? The BMI? All women know about no, the BMI. No, they changed the rules with <laughs> well, BMI. We, it's, it's <laughs> stand, no, I'm just telling you now. I would know being above 25. It's no longer 
obese. Here, Guy, what do you think about Bitcoin here? <laughs> my question about to Tom is exactly that. The fact that Goldman Sachs has made a push into this space gives it legitimacy on a different level, which is why a couple weeks ago we talked about if you took the name off the top of the chart and just looked at it, it appeared as though a bottom was put in. That's what I'll still say. Here's what I think is going on. First of all, I think from a sentiment perspective in terms of how it's being traded, you've seen a couple things in the last few days. You've seen uh, the GBTC, which is the, the, the trust that you can buy in retail form without doing anything, um, is, is essentially trading at a premium. And I mean on an intraday basis. We know it's traded at a big premium, but it's, you're, you're seeing enormous speculation um, right now. The other dynamic here is I think you've seen, uh, is he talked about that which is overbought. He would rather relative value into those less bought. We're seeing a roll down, and we're seeing a roll down into the less liquid assets. I think this is the same thing that we saw in, in December. And, right. and I think if you look at you know, things like Tron and, and Cardano, I mean, those are the ones that have been really outperforming over the last couple of days. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.